Thank you, choir. Our scripture this morning is from John chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small par barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over for those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again for a mountain by himself. This is the word of God for us today. So this week we're going to conclude our series on gratitude and joy. Uh, in our first week, we talked about how we should come to the house of God with gratitude in our hearts. Last week, we talked about living our lives with joy and gratitude. Uh, we discussed how you can't just look at a person and tell if they're a Christian, but you should be able to tell by how they live their life. Now, you may be thinking this morning, hey, pastor, you know Thanksgiving is over, right? Well, true, the holiday of Thanksgiving is over, but gratitude continues on. So let's talk about how and why we should try to find the thanks for everything in our lives. Now, I think the best place that we can start uh, when we talk about trying to find gratitude for everything in our lives uh, is with Sir Isaac Newton's uh, Laws of Motion. It makes perfect sense, right? That that's where we start when we talk about gratitude. Now, I know that you are all diligent students of physics, and we probably don't need to uh, make any explanation uh, of any of the three laws of motion and how they apply to gratitude, but just in case... Uh, I want to focus on that third law of motion, motion uh, is, and that's one that I bet you have heard in your life, and it states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And I know that it seems odd to start there when talking about having gratitude uh, in all things, but stay with me. Um, you see, I think we can apply that third law of motion to more than just physics. I believe that we can look at all things and understand that there is always an opposite way of thinking about them. And I have to tell you that if uh, my high school physics teacher saw that I was actually referencing anything doing with physics, he would be amazed that, one, I remembered anything, and two, that I learned anything in the first place, um, because I was not a great student of physics myself. Um, but again, there is an opposite way of thinking about them. So think of it this way. If there is greed in this world, then there is an opportunity for charity. If there is anger in this world, then there is an opportunity for kindness. And if there is hatred in this world, then there is an opportunity for love. And I assure you that there is greed, there is anger, and there is hatred in this world. And as such, there is the opportunity for charity, for kindness, and for love. 
Now, if there is despair in this world, there is the opportunity for joy. And if there is anxiety or worry in this world, there is the opportunity for gratitude. You see, for each possibility, we always have a way of reacting to it. And there is always an equal and opposite way for us to react. So in our lives, I do believe that we get a choice of how we choose to react to things in nearly all situations. Not every single one, but nearly all situations. You see, when things come our way, we can choose to be angry or we can choose to have kindness. We can choose hatred or we can choose love. We can choose greed or we can choose charity. See, again, I believe we have a choice. And we have a choice when it comes to living our life full of gratitude as well. See, we can choose to worry about things or we can choose to have gratitude for things. Now, I want to tell you about how the week went in our household this past week. This was, by all measures, a very difficult week in our household. On Monday, the door to our washing machine fell off. The hinge on the door just broke apart, and the washing machine was rendered useless. This is the second time that this has happened in the past year. And I don't need to tell you, you can imagine six people can generate a lot of laundry in a week. So the stacks of laundry were piled high until the replacement part came in. On Tuesday, someone who will remain nameless had their cell phone break. The screen just stopped working, apparently by no fault of their own, so I'm told. On Wednesday, the gremlin that had invaded our house must have decided to take a day off because everything seemed to go fine. And then on Thursday morning, as we were getting ready to uh, host Thanksgiving, our dishwasher decided to die. The pump in our dishwasher died. And if you think six people can generate a lot of laundry, six people can really generate a lot of dishes, especially when at least two of them hoard them in their rooms until you get them to bring them all to you. So we had a backup of dishes as well. And on Thursday, again, uh, as we were preparing our Thanksgiving meal, right in the middle of cooking everything, our fridge, which is less than six months old, decided it would stop working as well. And that meant that there would be no leftovers this year after Thanksgiving, that we were going to have to eat as much as possible on Thursday, and we did our best. Um, but that is how the week went in our house this past week. And I have to tell you that I got to the point where I was kind of feeling a bit like, well, what's next? What else can possibly break in the house this week? And when a, a string of things like that happens in your life, it's natural to ask that question, right? What, what's next? But I am thankful, though, that even though all of these things went wrong, there wasn't any worry that seemed to seep into our household. It wasn't a feeling of dread because for each thing that went wrong, there was an opportunity to have gratitude for what went right. The washing machine broke, yeah, it did, but I'm thankful that we all had more than one pair of clothes that we could wear until it was fixed. The dishwasher broke, yep, but I'm thankful that we still have a source of clean running water that would allow us to clean the dishes by hand. Even though when they brought the piles of dishes in, it took me about an hour and a half to do all the dishes that evening. That phone broke, yeah, but I'm grateful that I have a wife who is very, very smart and has the protection plan and it can be replaced. And yes, the, fi the fridge broke and there weren't any leftovers past Thursday night, but I'm grateful that it didn't break on Wednesday. I'm grateful that none of the food spoiled before we were able to cook it and that we were able to still have our meal as a family together. And even more than that, I'm grateful that I had food to eat in the first place. 
You see, it would have been uh, simple to look at all these bangs that were happening, all these bad things, and worry about what comes next. It would have been really easy to be upset about all the things that happened this week and just focus on the negative. But when it comes to how we view things in this world, again, I believe we have a choice. And this week, I am most grateful for the opportunity to choose gratitude over worry. In our scripture for today, we find an example of why I think we can choose gratitude over worry. As Jesus and the disciples were going, to, going along, a great crowd gathered to hear Jesus speak. Now, the immediate worry of the disciples was, how are we going to feed all these people? It's going to take over six months' wages to afford to feed them. And even if we had the money to buy the food, where are we going to buy the food to feed these people? What are we going to do? Well, we do have five loaves and two fishes. That, that might feed a few people. Now, we, we know this story, right? It's a familiar one. It's actually the only miracle that is mentioned in all four of the Gospels. Uh, we know that Jesus takes that meager supply of food, performs a great miracle, and feeds the thousands of people, and there's leftover as well to fill many baskets. And when it comes to choosing uh, gratitude or worry in our lives, I believe we are able to choose gratitude in all things because of Jesus. Just like he was able to feed all those people, despite the worries of the disciples, he is able to carry us through all things, despite our worries. Now, one of the things that I get to do as a pastor is to simply sit and talk with people. Now, a lot of the time when I'm speaking with people, we're not talking about anything important. You know what? That's okay. And sometimes, though, it is about very important things. And the reason that I like to do this so much is because I have a chance to learn from people when I am engaged in conversation with them. You know, it's interesting that this is something that I've come to enjoy as a pastor. When I began, this was the thing I dreaded the most. Um, was simply sitting and talking with folks. Because, I don't know if you know this, um, I'm a little awkward. I am. Um, especially in one-on-one -on -one conversations, I can be a bit weird. Um, and that's okay, it's who I am. Um, but I struggle sometimes with that. But it's something that I've grown to love as a pastor. And there is one person that I spend time with each month. And we sit and we talk about all sorts of things. And I know that they enjoy our time together, and I enjoy our time together greatly as well. And one thing that I have learned from them is a sense of having gratitude in difficult times because of Jesus. You see, they would tell you, and I've learned this lesson from them, when they are struggling, when things are hard, or when they're feeling as if they can't do something, they simply think about Jesus. They think about how he was willing to suffer all that he did on the way to the cross and on that cross just to save us. Just so that we could have everlasting life with him and his father. And when they do this, when they focus on what Jesus has done for them, they begin to notice how the things that they felt like they can't do or how the bad things in their life or the things that aren't going right in their life seem so very small. They begin to be overcome with a sense of gratitude for everything that Jesus has already done for them. It's a lesson that I am happy to have learned from this person and it came in real handy this week. But you know, all those things that I talked about this week, they're not really that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, are they? If I were to think about comparing the breaking of physical things to the willingness of Jesus to die on the cross for me, that's a bit much, isn't it? A bit much to over use that to overcome. It, it is. But when the truly difficult things in life happen, when you are feeling like you are defeated, when you feel as if despair and worry are all that you see in your future, 
that, that is the time to remember that we can have gratitude in all things because of what Jesus has done for us. We can remember all that he did willingly for us so that we can have eternal life. We can remember that no matter what we are facing, that the battle has already been won by Jesus. There is nothing that can come in our way and take away the fact that it's already been won if you have placed your faith in him. See, that is why I believe that we can have gratitude in all things, because the greatest gift that has ever been given has already been freely offered to you. So let's do our best to show Jesus gratitude for the gift that he has given us in everything that we do. My challenge for you this week is this. Remember to show gratitude to Jesus for all that he has done for you. And if you haven't accepted his gift yet, I invite you to come forward today and begin your life of gratitude. Amen.